hobby quick hits. Delivering that breaking hobby news. Directly to your earlobes. You wanna know those hot drops from the car shop? We've got you covered. With your host, John Newman. Hey everybody, welcome to episode 152 of Hobby Quick Hits. Today, another Q&A episode. I've been getting some questions and kind of putting them to the side to make these Q&A episodes. I hope uh, this is the third edition of them. I hope you enjoyed the first two. Also, with that being said, keep those questions coming. They can be on topic, we're highly related, or you could go a little off topic. If it's, if it's good enough, I'll select it and still run it on the show. So keep those questions uh, coming. Uh, we appreciate them. It allows us to do these uh, Q&A episodes every, you know, four to six weeks. And uh, kind of fun to, to let our hair down and just answer some questions that may be on your mind, and and chances are, if if you ask, someone else might be wondering the same thing. So we're going to hear from our great sponsors, Mojo Break, and right after that, we'll get the show started with the product releases for the next two weeks, uh, some news that happened in the hobby, and then your questions. MojoBreakShop.com is the best place to get your sealed wax products and breaks. They not only have the best selection, but the best prices. Whether it's a box or a whole case, they are your guys. They ship worldwide to your doorstep. Their reputation as one of the most trusted in the hobby goes unmatched. They are the 2021 Topps Rip Party Champion Breakers. From sports card to Pokemon cards, their selection can't be beat. They offer daily deals and pre-orders. Hey guys, John Newman here. Mojo's prices are already great, but to save an additional 10% off anything in their store, use the code QUICKHITS. That's Q-U-I-C-K-H-I-T-S. Check out the full service store that's open seven days a week in Santa Clara, California, or the website at mojobreak.com. Let's check out this week's Hobby Wax releases. Take it away, Max. Hey guys, it's Max from the Sports Card Shop in New Buffalo and soon to be Valparaiso. And I'm bringing you guys the weekly releases for this week. On the 10th, we have Panini Donruss Baseball, Panini Donruss Optic Basketball, Panini Donruss Optic Football, Panini Prism UFC Undercard. And on the 12th, we have Leaf Signature Series Basketball, Panini Donruss Racing. And on the 17th, we have Panini Crown Royale Basketball, Panini Revolution WWE. Panini Select FIFA Soccer and 2021-22 Upper Deck Clear Cut Hockey. And we have 2022 Leaf Art of Hockey on the 19th for our last release. Enjoy the show. Let's go around the hobby verse and catch up on this week's hobby news. Huge set auctioned off at Mile High Card Company, a 1968 Tops complete set with Listen to this. 572 cards PSA 10 out of the 598. So all the cards except 26 cards were PSA 10. But the set itself got an overall rating of 9.94 on the PSA registry. Meaning, you know, even those 26 cards that weren't PSA 10s were very high grades, most being 9s. Uh, including the Nolan Ryan rookie. It brought $1.4 million. There was an option. They were selling single cards concurrently, and whatever bids were higher was the direction they were going to go. So if the single cards combined brought more than what someone would bid on the whole set, they would have broken it up. But the whole set actually bids were higher than the individual cards. So uh, one buyer is getting that whole set, uh, the highest graded ever, uh, 1968 uh, top set. Quite a quite a uh, purchase there. Be interesting to see what the new owner uh, does with the cards. Police Department in Lansing, Michigan, have had to arrest 
one of their own, Officer Gregory Tracy, has been arrested on retail fraud charges, uh, alleging that he uh, cost Meyer Corporation uh, $10,000. What was he doing? Switching prices, right? Meyer comes in, stocks the shelves at Walmart and or Target. Uh, He's been doing it since January and April. What he was doing was taking the lower price tags off the lesser products and switching them with the higher higher end products, buying the more expensive wax for the cheaper prices and then reselling it and uh, obviously making profits. Uh, anyone knows that's uh, that's fraud or theft. I call it theft, but uh, official charge is, is fraud. Again, was doing it between January and April in numerous counties. Uh, he has been placed on, he's not fired as of yet. He's been placed on administrative leave as he awaits uh, his trial. He's uh, released on $10,000 bail. So uh, law enforcement officer uh, switching price tags, uh, making money, costing Meyer 10 k The other big story from uh, recently, PWCC uh, doing very well. Uh, you know, with their auctions and, and their their new things that they're rolling out. But they recently reduced staff by 25%. Uh, now they are down to uh, 130 employees from about 150, 160. But what's making more the news than the staff reduction itself is how they went about the business of letting people go. It was a 10-minute uh, phone call to let staff know Uh, that they are no longer employed. And while on that call, all the uh, employees' accounts uh, were shut down uh, and they were locked out. All their email and and other, you know, benefits accounts were were, uh, locked out, uh, shut down. Uh, They are to receive no severance pay, uh, 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 allegedly, and they will lose their PTO time. Uh, Also noted... None of the PWCC leadership was on that call. It was done via, like, HR representative. So the leadership itself wasn't uh, on the call. Now, there's nothing illegal about any of this. It was, you know, no laws were broken. It's just a a bad look, in in my opinion, in a bad way to handle that sort of business. That does happen sometimes. And, uh, you know, you don't, uh, you know, you don't, I guess you don't owe anyone anything uh, on their way out the door, but it's always nice to do it sort of, you know, above board with a little integrity. But uh, uh, that's uh, that's reports that how they handled their business there. Let's get to some auction news. Many items from Pele, renowned soccer player, recently deceased in December, uh, will be making its way to the Heritage Spring catalog uh, auction and uh, every item will be was hand signed by Pele b- before a few weeks before he passed away if you bid on any of these items and win you will receive an nft and you will also receive a video of Pele signing the item you won in the auction uh, so you'll get the video of the actual item being signed by Pele Carl Malone is doing uh, as consigned uh, 24 items from the 1992 Dream Team collection, uh, many jerseys and sneakers uh, autographed and game used by his teammates uh, uh, in their uh, gold medal win in, in 1992. Uh, that will be headed to Golden Auctions. Uh, so many. Many great items there, estimated at uh, over ten million dollars uh, combined. So uh, uh, head to Golden to check that stuff out. REA just concluded their spring auction uh, that ran between April sixth and April twenty third. All total, they uh, concluded with fourteen point seven million dollars in bids combined. Let's look at some of uh, the the bigger. Uh, Items that uh, closed in this auction, starting with the the big one, almost a million bucks, nine hundred sixty thousand dollars for a 1955 Tops Roberto Clemente rookie PSA nine. 
So almost a million bucks there alone. Uh, same year, Koufax rookie, also a PSA 9. Went for three hundred eighty-four thousand uh, dollars. My guy, Jackie Robinson, nineteen forty-nine Bowman rookie, PSA nine, brought in three hundred forty-eight thousand dollars in nineteen thirty-two. U.S. Caramel, Babe Ruth, graded PSA eight, brought in another two hundred and ten k. So all totaled almost fifteen million dollars in their spring auction. Congrats to REA. Hobby News Daily is your homepage of the hobby, providing original writing, exclusive gem rate data, a daily morning minute podcast, and some of the best content creators in the hobby. Remember, hobbynewsdaily.com and at Hobby News Daily on social. Happy collecting! And now, our feature presentation. presentation. All right. Welcome to our third version of Q&A, questions and answers. And, uh, you know, I, I first off, I got to say thank you, everyone, for being so interactive. You know, I asked for, hey, you know, any questions you want me to, to put on the show and answer them as part of Q&A episodes. And I usually get more than what I can put on one episode. And hence, we sort of space these out and uh, make multiple episodes. Although, these are the last group that I currently have at the time of this recording. So by all means, if you have a, a question that you want to ask me, uh, whether it pertains to the hobby, pertains to the show, or even off topic, by all means, uh, reach out to us on social medias uh, and uh, or uh, hobbyquickhits at gmail.com or sportscarnationpc at gmail.com uh, forward your questions. If you don't want your name read, uh, put that in the, you know, in the uh, correspondence that uh, you'd like to, to be anonymous. Some some people do do that, although we don't have any of those on today's uh, episode. So without further ado, let's get to six questions I have for this episode. We'll start in no particular order with the first one uh, on the list here. It comes from Jim. And Jim asks, John, what what is your favorite thing pertaining to cards that you get to do? Well, I like everything about the hobby, right? I think, uh, well, I don't want to say everything. That w- That's probably not exactly true. But one of the things I sort of take a, a little more personal satisfaction with uh, is, you know, buying a card raw, whether it be from somebody in a collection buyout, uh, even when I attend shows from somebody else, maybe in a bargain box or even from their show showcase itself right buying a raw card in this instance you know picking out sort of and purchasing a raw card you know examining it and then you know if it's a grading specimen send it in and get it graded and if it gets a high grade and whether you know sometimes i keep that for a pc card or if it's an inventory card for my card shows or online sales right reselling that and and doing well right having a good roi it's not believe me don't don't misinterpret what i just said it's not just about dollar signs but that's sort of some of the the most rewarding right uh, in a way is is sort of finding that i don't want to say needle in a in a haystack it's not nothing of that v- you know rarity but sort of taking something from the ground level and making the best of it right you know and uh and that that's just a good feeling at the end when you get maybe a card like that back a nine or a ten well again whether i'm keeping it or putting a price tag on it and putting it out uh for sale it's just it's it's nice when you can do it doesn't always happen so that's why it's it's rewarding and fun when it does so again you know uh it's did my first show at age of 15. Uh, I'm not in the hobby just because I'm a seller. It's just part of my DNA uh, at this point. All right, enough on that one. Let's go to our, our next question here. It comes from Mike. He says, you say you spend an hour and a half day on cards and content. How is that possible with all the shows you do, John? Well, believe it or not, it is because it's an hour and a half average a day, right? And so think about it. I may not spend an hour and a half every day. There are some days where maybe I spend half an hour. So it's on average, right? So one day I may spend half an hour and another day I may spend four hours, uh, you know, doing cards or content. So 
it just averages out. A lot of times on the weekend, Saturday or Sunday, I, I really don't, especially if I don't have a card show, uh, I don't spend a lot of time, you know, Again, it depends. Am I getting ready for a card show? Am I kind of caught up? Uh, but the average is about an hour and a half. So you do seven times an hour and a half, you get 10 and a half hours. I'm not saying in some weeks it's not 12 or 14 hours, but the general average is 10 and a half. And, and that's the way I like it. I got other things I like to do and, you know, spend some time with my wife, talk to my son. He's 23, you know, do other things. Uh, you know, it's winter time now, but in the spring and summer, you know, fly my drone, play some softball, and uh, hang out on the deck with a cigar and a drink. Uh, so I try to make time uh, for everything. And, and the older I get, uh, the better I'm actually getting at that, believe it or not. So, all right, this next question, I can't give any one person credit because I do get this question asked to me, you know, I don't want to say every week, but quite often, right? I'll get someone who will say, hey, I followed you on social media. Oh, uh, you didn't follow me back. Or how do I get a follow back? or follow me back right and so i try to i honestly do try to follow most people back when they follow me but sometimes i miss it right you get 10 20 people follow you you know in 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 a day you, you don't always uh get everyone followed back so please don't take it personal it's not me looking at your name and saying i'm not following you back the best way to get a follow back though besides following the show is be interactive with the show right if i post something if you like it or you comment and i open that comment or see that like and then i notice like hey says uh you know that follow button is still highlighted i'm going to follow you right so that's whenever i get asked that question and i answer it even off the air i always say somebody the best way is just to be interactive right Right? Uh, like or, or you know post a comment or something like that where I see that I'm not following you and make sure to uh, correct that so be interactive with the social media with the show that's really honestly the best way uh, I honestly do make an effort to try to follow everyone uh, if they follow the show but you know I'm not going to go online and spend no offense you know two hours just seeing who I don't follow and follow uh, that way uh, I just answer the question why I only spend an hour and a half a day so I don't want to I don't want to do it that way but uh, be active with us and we'll uh, make sure we're following you and reciprocating that all right next question does come from a person uh Justin asks John I've noticed you've gotten more into boxing cards why is that good question right I've always sort of been a boxing fan more during the heyday you know Duran Sugar Ray Leonard Hitman Hearns uh you know Tyson obviously heavyweight Lennox Lewis Holyfield during that sort of uh, early era right uh much like basketball, I like sort of the, the heydays better than the current uh, rendition. And boxing's in a different spot now with MMA and UFC kind of taking a lot of the, the spotlight. Um, I also was an amateur boxer, meaning I used to, you know, box in a gym, not on a professional level, but just spar and and, and, and that sort of thing. My dad uh, was the same. He basically taught me uh, some moves and how to box. So there's always there's a soft place in my heart for boxing. That's that's probably the, the number one reason. And I also feel like it's really sort of got, you know, when we look at, and, and again, this is not the only reason, but it's one of the reasons when we look at things, right, that still have more ceiling, that are still what I would consider bargain buys. You can get this stuff, you know, at an affordable price still. Uh, boxing kind of checks those boxes, uh, no pun intended there, um, that, you, you know, even some of the superstars, even some of what we would classify as the, the rookies are still fairly affordable when you compare them to their other sport counterparts, you know, baseball, football, basketball, uh, and hockey. So that's that's why boxing, I just have sort of a, a personal affinity uh, for it. And, uh, you know, my collection is getting uh, bigger on that side of, of the app. All right, next question comes from Sam. Do you have your cards in a vault? All right, I, I, I love this question. You know, vaults are a big deal, obviously, in the hobby now. All these big selling platforms almost every one of them now has a vault we 
know about some of the more famous vaults, right? eBay, PWCC, uh, and the like, right? Uh, do you have any card? You know, I always, one of my hobby mantras that I post on social media is, you know, I joke that your vault is anywhere you keep your cards, right? Your desk, your safe, wherever your cards are, that's your personal vault. And it's not tongue in cheek. Well, it is a little bit, but it, it real. I do really believe that, right? Wherever your cards are is your vault. Do I have a vault? Well, I, I, I'm going to, I'm going to confess something. I don't know. Maybe confess is not the word, right word. It's not really a secret, but I did win my first card in a PWCC auction uh, about two weeks ago, and I didn't have it shipped to me, so it sits in PWCC's vault under my name. So that's the only card I would say uh, falls into that sort of category. But, you know, I have a lot of nice cards. I have a safe here, uh, you know, that uh, I keep them in and uh, a lot of security cameras and that and security measures in place. But my vault, or, or, and I always feel like your vault is anywhere you keep your cards. So I don't have a, you know, a bunch of cards in a vault off site somewhere necessarily, but, um, and I don't have anything against them either. That's not what I'm saying. It's just, I like to look at my cards. I like to see my cards uh, when I can and when I want to. All right. Our last question for this episode comes from Vince. It says, John, what is your favorite part of the national? Man, that's a, that's a tough question, right? It's like asking a parent who has multiple children right what's your who's your favorite kid right it's hard to pick you, you really there is no one or there shouldn't be anyway right maybe secretly parents uh have a favorite uh i'm i don't have to worry about that i only have one son so i i don't have uh, another option so to speak but uh man favorite thing in the national i mean there's so so much right you know, it's a it's a, a giant card show where almost anything that exists in the hobby is probably there, right? If you're looking for something, whether you're you're a whale, a big fish with a lot of money, or you want to just hit bargain boxes for a few days, uh, it, it it's something for everybody. So obviously, I always like to obtain two or three significant cards. Uh, but you know what? You know, the tagline of, of our flagship show, right? The Sports Card Nation is the hobbyist to people. So I'm going to answer like this, right? Seeing everybody, friends, uh, that I, existing friends, seeing them again. You circle that week every year on the calendar to, to meet up, have dinner, hang out with, walk the show floor, help each other out, that sort of thing. Meeting people that you've friended maybe in the past year in online form and finally meeting them in person and doing similar things. Uh, as well. So I'm going to say the people, right? Uh, getting to see your friends uh, and the people of the hobby that you're, you're, you're fond of and like hanging out with uh, and, uh, you know, picking up some cards for sure. So uh, there you go. I kind of gave two answers, but I couldn't narrow it down to just one. All right. Thank you for listening to another episode of Hobby Quick Hits. Want to give out our social media, starting with our website, which is www sportscardnationpodcast.com Facebook, you can follow us at www.facebook.com forward slash sportscardnationpodcast forward slash Twitter, we are at sportscardnat1 so it's sportscard n-a-t-i-1 Instagram at sportscardnationpodcast or you can email the show hobbyquickhits at gmail.com. Again, thanks for listening. We'll see you next week.